Hi, my name is Katarina Swift, and my study was called Memory and Color, and this study was supervised by Dr. Alexander Swamp. My project studied the recognition rates after a distractor task of old and new photos. I had hypothesized that the old altered photos would have higher rates than the new photos and the old unaltered photos. There was 20 old photos and 20 new photos presented after the distractor task, each having either 11 or 9 altered or unaltered photos. The results of, the rates of hit or miss were then calculated after coding the responses to either a zero for no or a one for yes. The number of yeses for each section, which were old altered, old unaltered, new altered, and new unaltered, were then added together and divided by the total number of photos in that section to get hits, misses, false alarms, and correct rejections. This was all then put into JAST to find out if my results were significant. As I previously stated, my hypothesis was that the photos that they have seen before that have been altered to a solid color, such as blue bananas, would be more recognizable than photos that they have that have not been altered and more recognizable than photos they have not seen before. While doing research for the study, I discovered that there was tons of research on recognition and recall when presented with words, but very few research, not a lot of research when presented with photos. And not everything that's presented to us as humans is always as words, so knowing what we are capable of in remembering in terms of photos is always a good thing. And I wanted to test the recognition of photos by altering them, seeing if we remember entities that stand out more than those that do not. My project helps to add support to previously designed research, which in turn helps its significance because we can see that research has continued to grow and even after numerous tests when altering them to make them your own, the results stay about the same. We recognize old entities that stand out more. My results also helps to develop the place for research to continue to grow. Is it the specific colors that make you remember the object more or is it just that the object is unnatural? We could always do more research to find this out. So as there was quite a few references that were cited throughout my entire project, they are all listed here. The criteria for, my pro for the participants in my study, any person who was 18 or older and lived in the United States were eligible to participate. So, and as participants were record recruited using social media, I was able to reach more people of all ages. As I was going through my data, I did eliminate anybody who was not from the United States or who had answers that did not match up with my criteria. My study was presented on Google Forms, and after consenting to participate, I had the participants fill out a variety of demographic questions that asked for their age, their ethnicity, their gender, their, gender, the region they are located in the United States, and a few others. After collecting that data, I had the participants watch a short video, which had 40 old photos in it, in which afterwards they went directly into answering two-digit math problems that were required. Once that was complete, they were asked whether or not they had seen 40 different photos. So I thought I actually had 10 altered and 10 unaltered of each type of photo, but I actually miscalculated. And I only had 11 altered and nine unaltered of the old photos and nine altered and 11 unaltered of the new. So it was still 40 photos, but it wasn't exactly equal. Based on the data that I collected, I can see that the results showed signs that photos you've seen before that have been altered were recognized more than photos that had not been altered based on the data presented when I did a paired samples t-test. The first set of data had no issues with normality and showed that the T was 2.204 with a P of 0 0.029. So for the hits, that was for the hits on the altered versus unaltered old photos. Based on my alpha level that was set of 0.05, this result showed significance and it showed a difference. The data for the other test performed showed normality issues, so I did take that into consideration and performed a Willer-Coxon signed rank test to account for this. The data from the, from the false alarmed versus unaltered, false alarm altered versus unaltered, showed a T of 3,707 and a P of 0.717, which, based on my alpha level of 0.05, was not significant and there was no difference. Let's discuss. I can see that the data I collected was supported and the photos that have been seen before that had altered were more recognized than photos that had not been altered. What does it mean? It means that the data I collected showed difference between 
how many they recognized when they had been altered and how many they recognized when they had not been altered. Breaking down the data farther, we can see where the difference is. If we look at the data presented from the hits on altered photos versus hits on unaltered photos, I could see that the average percent correct on the altered photos is 0.85 with a standard deviation of 0.156. The average percent correct on the unaltered photos was 0.816 with a standard deviation of 0.18. This means that the photos that had been altered were recognized more often than those that had not been altered. So let's connect what I, what I found to what has previously been found. It does seem to be, what I found was similar to what others have found, which I think is what I was after, which was to replicate a study, but kind of make it my own. As most people who do studies like these use words and not pictures. I felt like pictures would stand out more. One study that I found had pictures in it. The one, there was pictures that were colored or remember actually better than later on than when the photos were in black and white. This study was Vernon and Leroy Jones 2010, which was cited previously in this presentation. I found that that was very interesting and I wanted to see if it was similar if the photos were in a different color. My study showed the opposite result. The altered photos were recognized more later than unaltered photos. So their photos were in black and white, were not recognized as often as the photos that were not altered. My photos that were altered were recognized more, more than the photos that were not altered. So for my limitations, the video that I used, I had to post it on Facebook, YouTube first. It was on a setting though that only those with the link could view it, but I could not make it so the video could not be altered. So I had to trust my participants would not move forward and backwards in the video and just watch the video once. I also had no control over who participated in my study and had to put it out to the public. Hope I got enough participants. While I did not get enough power, there was not enough power in my study, which I only had, I believe it was 147 out of 200. I did show an effect, so that was not much of a problem. Instead, it gave it more external validity. The lack of control over where they were in the study and the lack of control over the video could be seen as limitations. And my photos were probably one of my biggest limitations I had. They were really difficult to edit to make specific colors. And if I could do the study over again, I would make all the photos that are altered the same color to see if that actually made a difference and not just different colored photos. So, for example, I have like blue, purple, green. If I could do it over again, I'd probably just make them all like blue. I feel like maybe that would make a difference. So, overall, I do feel like my study was a success and that we can conclude that there is a difference between recognition of photos that you have seen before that have been altered versus recognition of photos you have seen before that have not been altered. I can, you can, we can also conclude that photos you have seen before are recognized more than photos you have not seen before. And with that, thank you for your time and I hope you have a great rest of your day.